Hello and welcome to Achichi Czech Republic 2017 World Championships. This is the schedule we're going to be looking forward to today. 11A final. So it's a cracking performance. I'm Matthew Layton as ever. And today I have specialist guests for the canoes and the kayaks. Starting off with the canoes, Ian Ross from the United States of America, moving on to Johnny Scafield from Great Britain. So let's uh, see it as it is. We're sitting 20 meters from the finish line. We're looking at the big grandstands, which are almost full. There's a new grandstand coming on. There are friends from Hungary who uh, we saw them in London. We saw them in Rio. We see them at every championship, and of course, the home, spiritual home for many people of canoe, which is Seged. Look at all those people in the grandstands. Weather-wise, it's a cracking day. Not much breeze. And Ian, welcome to you. Yeah, it's good. It's a great day out here. We got full stands. Everyone seems really excited. We got a nice little tailwind, so we should have some pretty nice times today. These are the ten teams going forward into the final. Three or four familiar faces, the Brazilians, they've medaled so far in Sega this season. They obviously came off a huge emotional experience with the the whole Rio build-up. Clearly, canoeing wasn't in it, but this, the, uh, the, uh, this, they're looking forward to uh, moving forward it for them. France, they have a, a good team there. You can see all the, uh, the physio work that's been going on. The Germans, the young Germans, I was speaking to them they, uh, apparently when their mothers say, uh, let's go, it's, uh, it's a wonderful feeling. Yeah, it's going to be a, a busy day for them. <laughs> so, this the Russians as like well, they, uh, Andreeva is, uh, is, is top also. Alessia Omlenske, she's a good individual paddler. Here they are, both paddling on the same side. Katie Vincent, Laurent Vincent Lapointe, who's the fastest paddler ever in the C1200 and the local from Hungary, not quite local, the Virag Balak, who's got Takac, they've been putting in some stunning times earlier in the season. Alana Nazdrova, she's, uh, she's a surprise perhaps, she's been winning everything when she's come into the season and also we have uh, with her Camille Bobo, who's a former world champion. So there's three or four teams that we could uh, look at it and they're really performing well. Yeah, I think the, I mean, that, those middle three are uh, pretty much staples of the podium for this uh, event um, so I expect a lot from those three well we looked at the first heat where the winner went directly through and that was very much a case of Canadians with two seconds ahead faster than all the others so 500 meters will be an Olympic event the strip is really going up and going up as you can see we have a 10th lane and it's the Czech Republic The speakers are really going to be revving up the crowd. They're the same speakers who do such a good job in the slalom, in the Troja course in, uh, in Prague. They speak in English, Czech, French, whatever language you want. They're here to rev the crowd up. So it should be a good performance. <laughs> well, yeah. Here they are on the buckets. Looks like and a good start from Hungary. Hungary all in white. Canadians both paddling on the same side. Yeah, it's unorthodox, but they're both fast enough to make it work. So it looks like they pulled ahead a little bit already. Wow, a lot. I was speaking to Lance Vincent Lepoint a couple of days ago, and she said, uh, yes, he has the pressure for your favorite, but yes, he's feeling good. And she's making him do an exhibition here. Yeah, it looks like uh, it's a one-horse race right now. Brazil's coming up strong, though. It looks like they're keeping the technique nice and short and quick with the tailwind, but Canada looks like they're very efficient right now. But it's surprising that Hungary are holding back a bit in lane number six, which is really a case of Canada have a whole boat length lead with also the Russians looking to take up second position at the moment. That's uh, the river and Bobler from Belarus in your position. Yeah, it looks like Hungary might be either saving for a finish or just uh, caught a little behind off the line. We'll see what happens. Belarus looks like they're coming strong at the finish, though. Well, no doubt about who's the dominant, who's going to cross the line to be the world champion. And it is going to be 100 meters to go. Russia's pulling forward a little bit. Canada's holding the lock out. Belarus is staying pretty even with Russia. Coming into our vision now, and it is Canada has been leading all the way. However, the Russians are catching them with the Belarus, catching them all set for three horse race. Now they're coming into about 80 meters to go, so I confused myself a bit ago. But so far, is can the Canadians hold off? Canada looks like they just take up the short grade a little bit. It looks like they're going to come in first, but Russia and Belarus are going to 
several categories but they know that the regatta has started it's world championships you give it everything you have and katie benson at the moment she's having a bit of a downtime she's earned it <laughs> the there. she's the current under 23 world championship and she's second in the suit in the europeans that was really just a great race by Canada. They took it out really strong and they were able to hold on at the finish because of the technique. Russia had a really impressive push there right at the end though. Really made the Canadians give it everything they had. How much inefficiency do they lose by being on the same side? It's hard. Uh, you got to give Katie Vincent a lot of props for being able to keep that boat running as smoothly as it was uh, with two paddlers on the left side. They're also fortunate that it isn't a side win today. Um, but that's it's extremely impressive to be able to do that, especially against strong crews like Russia and Belarus and Hungary. Well, if you are watching us in Canada, it's uh, well, it's the middle of the night. So thank you for staying out. Yeah. It was worth it surely yeah. to see your compatriots put in a to really gutsy performance. Yeah, way to support your team at all hours of the day. Well, 156 is probably about the fastest ever we've seen. And that is uh, Katie Vincent, Laurence Vincent Lapointe, taking it from Andrea Vermonesco with the Belarus, Nadova and Bobra in third place. Yeah, it's great. It really shows the improvement is really showing that their uh, events are growing very quickly. Well, the program is moving fast and furious. And from the C2 women, we are now moving into the K1 women. Jay Bridge and Jones, she's a full time paramedic, she's a part time paddler. Lisa Carrington is a full time paddler, going in four events this weekend. Lina Stavich is a top serve. Johnny Scafield's just stepped in. We've seen a really exciting race, and now we have some real athletes here. Elena Anashina, who won in Sega this year, beating, beating Lisa Carrington. We're just going through the, the athletes. Emma Jorgensen took the silver medal in Rio. She's still young, but she's really, she won everything as a junior, really coming forward. Bella Kudenska, she was the fastest in the heat. She beat Lisa Carrington in the semi. She's been around for the last six years. Sabrina Herring, part of the K4 German squad, the six or seven top talented Germans out there. So it looks like we're going to have a cracking final. Teresa Portela from Portugal. She's been around forever as well. And not to be confused with Teresa Portela from Spain. And finally, Ivana Padova, who's perhaps the surprise in the final. But uh, tell me what you think, Johnny. Yeah, this is going to be a fantastic final. There's a interest all across the board from Lisa, multiple Olympic medals, and Ivana has been paddling for, for a long time now, but this is her first major world champs K1 final. Well, on the line, Lisa Carrington going for four events this competition, and she's at the top of your picture in lane number two. Yeah, you know, great start for Lisa. Well, there we go, she's pulling out a lead, using her 200 metre pace that she's got. She just needs to relax now. Once you're out there in this middle phase of the 500, it's about paddling at a high speed but conserving energy. And the Jorgensen, you see in the picture, they were about uh, 20 centimetres apart in Rio. The Duda Kozak clearly not competing as a uh, baby, which is good for her, but so far it is Lisa Carrington taking it out. Also, Sabrina Herring is looking fast. Yes, Sabrina's really quite up there with the top three girls. Bola Cadenza has dropped back a little bit, but she may well start squeezing on the finish of this race. It looks like it's going to be a tight one. Jamie to Jane, the top of your picture, is uh, really putting in a great performance. Making a final is already a victory. Lisa taking it away as they come to the 200 metres to go, and there's really four other athletes chasing her down. Wow, we see the battle Russian really starting to push through now. I think she might have the momentum to take herself to the line. Well, it 
is Kudenska, part of the K4. They were the world champions in 2015, and Lisa Carrington. They are head and head together, coming into the last well, 100 meters now. Yep, and the last Kudenska one. is taking advantage. Yeah, look at that really long stroke. Kudenska still. I don't think her technique is going to fall this, so she's going to get it on the line. Can Lisa stay ahead in that second place? Well, Belarus is really pushing all the way. It's coming down to neck and neck. Looks like Belarus has taken it. Um, yes, yeah, and New Zealand. Yeah, Belarus there, first place. Amazing event for Pavla coming out of the long history of the race of K4s to take the world title on the K1. Well, she's been on the radar at top four or five paddlers for the last uh, five or six years here. Five, six, and I say in the heat, seven, she was too fast, two seconds control. faster than the others. Two, yeah, the heat five, looked like she might dominate that six, final, but it was a uh, real credit to Lisa that she pushed her all the way to the line. Then, well, you can tell us from an insider's point of view, I guess it's not that easy uh, quadrupling up. Oh, I mean, what Lisa's planning to do this weekend is unbelievably tough. Uh, the technical changes going between different boats and the physical toll of um, all the rounds stacking up on top of each other. I thought this might be one of the, the hardest of events for her to, to meddle in. So to take a second place is a pretty fantastic start to, uh, to her weekend. Well, two events down. The C2500 women missed all five minutes ago. Was that where Canada held on a gutsy performance to take the victory? And now we've just seen a half a metre finish ahead for Bola Kudenska from Belarus. Just ahead of Lisa Carrington who gave it a wall, but today wasn't quite enough. And it looks like third position was Emma Anstad Jorgensen from Denmark, who uh, took the medal in the Olympics. But look at that, she doesn't know yet, but now she does. Yeah, and that's the way to race it. You know, in these uh, 500 metre events, they're so hotly contested, you can't be looking around coming up to the line. Let's check yeah, out the time. 1.48, Rolla Kudenska takes the gold for Belarus. Lisa Carrington, silver for New Zealand. Emma Anstead Jorgensen for Denmark takes the bronze. And it's emotional today. Yes, you can see what a world title means to these athletes. It really is saying you're the pinnacle of your sport. But <laughs> I bet Lisa comes and congratulates her. Oh, absolutely. The, um, the sportsmanship between all the athletes out here is really something great to be a part of. Um, the people you're racing against often, the people you're most closely aligned to in the world. You're out there training, uh, spending your life in kayaks and canoes. Um, racing is just to see who's the fastest. Well, good summary. That's Johnny Scafield off the mic for the next couple of minutes because we're moving on quickly to the canoes again. And this is the C2 500 meters. It's a rather small box and we have the uh, rather large Ian Ross coming in, coming back in, Ian, to talk us about uh, Vyshchuk Yanchuk took the bronze medal for the Ukrainians in the C2 1,000 meters in Rio. They are a top pair, very small, but they really are a top pair. We have some great combinations uh, looking forward today. We have quite a few new mixes, I believe, in, in, in this combination. Yes, yeah, some very new mixes, but still some very dominant paddlers. I mean, Stefan Curie from Germany went to uh, the Olympics last year for C1-200. He's paddling with Conrad, who got second at the German trials. Victor Mihalaki, obviously, everyone knows him from the C2, and Karp Leonard is the fastest C1 guy in Romania. The Russian C2 for the 500 looks very, very strong. Uh, I think Asian Steel has so far 12 gold medals from the world. Yeah. He swaps partners all the time, but he's always in there. He's an amazing paddler. Poland, you can never count out in doubles for a canoe. They're, they just really know how to do that. And Belarus has, has a Beldanovich brother in there, so that's all you really need to say there. Double Olympian with his, with his, uh, with his brother, who's uh, not in there. Robert Mike was the uh, world champion, I believe, 2013 or 14 with Henry uh, Baziani. Cracci and brothers, they're always in all their or thereabouts, very tough nuts from Italy. Yes. This is going to be quite the race. And this is Moldova. Sprinchin and that's a new combination. Anyway, let's see who's going to be the first. The four, five, and six are clearly the lanes to look out for. And it looks like a very fast but a very even start to this race. Looks very competitive all the way across the field. Well, the Russians were the first in the European six weeks ago, and they're the ones who've taken it out. This next to them is uh, Karp and Miklachi from Romania, who's uh, lacking international. 
international races recently, but they're really, two of them are pushing it ahead of the others. Yeah, this is a very, very fast start, but the Russians have a much lower short grade. A lot more connected to the hips, and uh, Romania is really keeping the short grade very high, so that normally favors the Russians for the end of this race, but we'll see what happens. There's two boats are leading the wall at the moment. The Russians have been so strong in this event over the last many, many years, especially in the last 10 years. Shatil has been the C2 individual, the C2 double, and here we see him at the two other meters to go. They've started second league. Yeah, it looks like Russia's really taking it away. They're staying very connected through their hips. The boat's flying very, very well. And they still have a low stroke rate. They probably have a lot left to take, but here comes Karp and Victor Mihalaki. They're pushing for the finish. Patrick Brothers still putting in a call in lane number eight. After that, the top of your picture, we saw the two Ukrainians with the white tops holding on there, but it's very much a case of the Russians are controlling the race. With 20 meters to go, it's very much Russia all the way, fast finishing, and the Italians are going to just take third. Wow. Well, Russia takes the victory again. Well, happy. That was quite the finish from Italy, but Russia really controlled that race from start to finish. Literally in front for the entire race, so that's that's hard to do at this level. That, that was an impressive race. Well, and even Chantel makes a big land there. Another day at the office. Yeah. The crowd will be celebrating. Yeah. Six and eight to hold control. That was, uh, that was an incredible finish by Italy. They should, they should be very happy with that. Six. Well, you race with a brother. I guess there's different emotions. There's certainly an understanding there. Yeah. Yeah. Having having the, that connection come through and be positive and actually work is. Uh, a great, great feeling. We saw them from the start, they took control. And Victor, Victor Villalaki with a new C2 partner is still able to be fast in the C2 500. Yeah, it's just a very, very smooth technical race by Russia. They never really, they look like they just raced their race, they weren't worried about anyone else. Is that the timing? Yeah, they, yeah, they're just perfectly in sync with each other, but really they're just super connected to their hips together, so the, all the boat's momentum just went straight forward, there was no wasted energy. And with the lower stroke hit, they were able to maintain a lot longer as well. Satisfaction of a job done. Well done. It'd be great to see a picture of the Cratchit brothers coming over the line because they really uh, they let out all, yeah. Their, <laughs> yeah. all their energy. Yeah, I hope they don't have any more races because they, they just went very hard and then was used a lot of energy right at the end. <laughs> it's celebrating. What's the deal with these hats? They have loads of different styles. Do you think it makes you go faster? Uh, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Definitely, I think uh, it seems to be very common with some of the Eastern Europeans. I think they just look like for sweat. <laughs> Keeping the sweat out of their eyes, but yeah. yeah, it's very popular. I don't know. Well, that's another race. Let's have another switch around because I think we've got so many point. coming in, <laughs> and then we're going to have the K1 1000 men. But here we go. Confirmation of the results. Chetil and Antep in one. 38. They took out the victory in the Cup for Romania with the Cratchit brothers coming in third. But a really, really competitive race there, and they all are. They all gave it them all, but control uh, from the expert in uh, Ross was saying the, the crux of the matter. Johnny, you were uh, watching that. I hear that, uh, not to embarrass you, but I hear you're trying it out in the sea boat as well. Does that give you something to aim for? <laughs> that is a little bit embarrassing. Yeah, I jumped in a boat for the first time a couple of weeks ago to see what it's all about and um, watching these guys uh, and having had an experience of being in a boat. I mean, they are amazing. Um, Absolute physical ability, massive guys, really strong. But what the sport is actually about um, is that finesse and technique, it seems. And there's uh, Ross Holly, the uh, ICF media manager. He's the chap who's responsible for all the uh, very quick interviews post race. Yeah, it's great. You know, we've got a lot of good personalities out there from our athletes, and um, it's good to get a little bit of exposure on a weekend like this where there's going to be heaps of fantastic racing with all these guys on the top form. It's a good turnout for the spectators because 
to say we're in the middle of nowhere is not an exaggeration. <laughs> Absolutely. When we race the World Cups here, which is, which is to say, uh, we're often here with a pretty small crowd and it feels like we're racing on our own, but the Czechs have turned out, of course, um, and there are plenty of other nations as well have made the, made the trip to support our own athletes. And for the last two or three days, we've been blessed with the weather. Uh, there's been virtually no wind. There's been a couple of drops of rain, but that's just one of those things. It's fairly 28, 29 degrees. And as you can see there, the, uh, the crowd, as the as momentum builds, they're going to have a, a wonderful day. I think in the next race, which is going to take place after a medal ceremony, there's going to be a bit of Czech interest. Which is yeah. the... Uh, <laughs> A bit of check interest to say the least. Big Josef Dostal is an absolute star over here, and um, he's got to be one of the favourites coming into the race. There's the photographer in the army. Uh, disguised camera is uh, Valent Vazaki, who is the ICF photographer. He takes thousands of pictures every single week and uh, completely enjoys the experience, gives all the fair to to all the athletes, of course. And that view looking up on the finish line, you're going to get some of the other uh, facial expressions of. Uh, Everyone in, in victory and defeat. Um, there are going to be some great shots coming out there, I'm sure. Well, we're going to wait for the first ceremonies. We try and give you as much of the action as possible. Clearly, the the most important thing is the racing. However, we do manage to put in three or four victory ceremonies. Uh, there'll be next one taking place in a couple of minutes, hopefully. Clearly, the athletes have to come out. They have to have their boat weighed, and they have to make sure that everything is in the regulations. But it looks like the first one's going to start now. These are the medals that everyone wants. It's the ICF official medals. Dámy a pánové, je připraveno vyhlášení nejlepších závodní finálového závodu kategorie K1 ženy 500 metrů. Ladies and gentlemen, women. the award ceremony of category K1 women for 500 meters is ready. And it's always the same way. You do have the hostesses taking the medals, the athletes, bronze, gold, silver and then a dignitary, a highly placed dignitary from the ICF, and then the team leader from the winning nation, which is a really good idea, I think, to give them all the, the credit. Absolutely, it's a team effort getting these girls uh, onto the race and getting them up the board, so it's nice having them with your team there to support. Medal goes to Emma Astrid Jorgensen. She cleared up as a junior. Absolutely. I mean, she won one Olympic distances K1, 500, 200, twice a junior world, two consecutive years. An incredible feat, uh, an incredible athlete. And we saw in the Olympics with uh, 50 meters to go, there were about four or five in the mix. She came, she came through. I mean, that was a race and a half. But, um, had that, um, that confidence and resolve as a, as a young fan in your first Olympics to snatch the medal was, was really impressive. But she seems to have carried on with her form this year as well. Lisa Carrington, New Zealand. Uh, Lisa Carrington, double Olympic champion, great ambassador for New Zealand for the sport in general, I believe. And she sets herself challenges, doesn't she? She doesn't sit back. She sets herself new challenges. Yeah, nothing's ever enough for this athlete. Um, going from the single single event at 2012 Olympics to, to doubling up in two K ones. Last time round, winning those two medals. And now she's going for Monica well, Kudenska. To be fair, she has been the dominant athlete. Is she going to hold it together? I don't think so. <laughs> no, I think you're right. Yeah. Talk about emotion, she's uh, putting it out there. Absolutely, and uh, we all feel like that in these moments, and it's nice to see an athlete show it sometimes. I'm talking with Johnny Scofield, who's a multiple Olympic medalist, so he knows what he's talking about. Yep, but I've never been on the top spot of this podium. So. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. See one paddler's lookout. Well, here she is, Vole Kudenska from Belarus, a great crew member, and also is proving that she's at the top of the tree now. Yes, absolutely, the, the K4 hasn't turned up here, and a couple of the girls from that boat are targeting the individual events. She's going to crack, but fair enough.
Lekodenska takes the gold medal for Belarus in the women's K1 500 meters. Let's see if they're going to get the obligatory podium selfie. Will the girls go on the podium there? Well, K1 1000 meters. Dostal is where all the local interest is. Joseph Dostal is his name. Olympic vice champion and a big Blake. So apart from that, we have lots of big Blakes. In fact, we have uh, Tom Leibischer. We saw him running past about half an hour ago in his zone. Vanek Kopas is, is competing with a broken thumb. He dropped his uh, boat on his thumb a couple of days ago. Rennie Holton Poulsen has been there, the double world champion, 500 and 1,000. Let's not forget about Fernando Pimento, who is the reigning European champion. Most of Kirchhoff makes many, many finals. Yeah, I mean, we've got worlds world medalists across the board in this race pretty much uh, a couple of guys going for their their first title potentially Ali Urenia there from Belarus has been a force for a long long time and, uh, I don't know why we're showing him no I don't think that's <laughs> Augustine <laughs> although he's uh, he's probably the, the, the paddler on the best trajectory at the moment he's absolutely come to the fore this year a uh, young under 23 paddler winning the under 23 world champs a couple of weeks ago and now in a senior A final Tom Labisher, obviously Olympic champion, has started off as a C1, 200 paddler, uh, pushed himself to the limit in the K4, and now he's trying different events with fun, I guess. Oh, I mean, he doesn't, <laughs> he's out there to win every single time. Uh, Raced him a lot in the K2, 200 meters. So we hear the, uh, the roar for Josef Dostal, the biggest bloke on the star line. I was, uh, I was, I was actually had dinner last night with the Moroccan, Majel, who was uh, in his next lane to him in the heat for the C1 5, K1 500 yesterday. And he said he's desperately trying to keep with him because once you win his wash, you, you can't do anything. I mean, it's a big wash. Ali Urania, who's had a good victory this year, in fact. He, uh, he had a, obviously disappointment to not going to the Olympics, but then he's back with something to prove, and he's been on the scene for the last five or six years as well. He, he absolutely has, and he just hasn't cracked that, that world, world title. Um, he had a good year in 2013 in the K2, a second place there over a thousand meters but this year he looks like he's a force to be reckoned within his k1 again fernando um, pimenta no doubting what his tactics are going to be he goes out fast yes. and keeps going faster if he paces it correctly he can really be one to, to, to catch as we saw the last last year at the olympics he over it a tiny bit in the first part and then people came fast towards the end Rennie holden also had a very disappointing olympics but was the double world champion as i said he's been around many many years I mean, yeah, he's a 19-year-old 19, 19 Olympic medalist in the K2 from Beijing, but hasn't cracked that Olympics uh, since. Roy Rodriguez normally s flies under the radar, but often comes in the top four. Yep, underrated paddler, really good K1 500 meter paddler, so it'll be interesting to see if he uses that to go out hard in the early stages. And here we are, Olympic event, K1 1,000 meters for Chichi 2017 World Championships, and they're in the buckets. Pressure on Dostal. He has underperformed in the 1,000 meters this season so far. Yeah, he looked good in the early rounds, didn't he? he Skip the Europeans. When he holds the course with the yellow tip, Red Bull boat out to a fast start. So is Roy Rodriguez. Dostal with the oversized boat is something to prove. Absolutely. Well, here we see Tom Leave. Shall we see the speed of a 200 meter paddler? See what he can do to get again from the start. But he really needs to relax soon. Long, long way to go. Rennie sitting upright in his normal style. Pimenta not going out too fast. Bottom of your picture, we can see Roy Rodriguez also gone out fast. But Tom Lebischer, does he have a secret weapon? Um, yeah, he's got lots of weapons. None of them secret, but he's going to need them all today to keep Dostal behind him to the line. We see in lane number six, the European champion, who also was the last European champion. Now, Fernando Pimenta, who won in Montemore this season, he is also putting in a statement. So there's three in a line. Absolutely, and there's Rene there as well, keeping in touch at the moment. So it's going to be an exciting race. Malik Kopp, as I say, and not in it today. He won in the uh, 19-year-old. He actually won in second but with a broken thumb. He can't do anything. Has the guts to continue, have it? Oh, it's really impressive. He still went out there in the 500 meters yesterday. Um, but you know, I think he might struggle with his starts for that thumb. But he can still come strong towards the end. Well, Dostal, with his extremely slow stroke rate, is putting so much power down. Yeah. Seeing him in this position at this stage of the race, I think he's going to be extremely hard to beat at the end. He's just inching past Leecher at the moment. Well, it is a mill pond out there, so perfect conditions. The flags are down. Fernando Pimenta in lane number six as they come 
Near the 500 meter mark, there's a fraction ahead of Joseph Austin and Tom Leibischer. Holding it together well. I mean, absolutely. But over this Olympic distance, um, 1,000 meters to do that is, is even more impressive than that 500 in, uh, in Duisburg, which was an amazing race. Alu Urenia there taking four, fifth for Valent Kopas. They'll both be a little bit disappointed, but they'll be fueled to go through the rest of this Olympic cycle. These are big boys, aren't they? Oh, these are really big boys. And the interesting thing is, you know, we see all the events progressing. But nowadays, you need the speed to go off the line in a thousand meters. Well, Tom Lavish takes the gold for Germany, Fernando from into silver, and Joseph Dostal takes the bronze medal for the Czech Republic. The time is tight. We've shown lots of replays. Let's move on to the C1 1000. Johnny, thank you. We'll see you in a minute. It's now back to Ian Ross. What a great race that was, and it's uh, now a case of looking at Thomas Katzel and the other competitors in the C1 men 1000 meters. Wow, what an incredible race by Tom Leach. I can't believe it just happened, but we're on to the C1000. This is going to be a great race as well. Carlos Pacchini, he's been there or thereabouts in the last few races. Well, yeah. the, the Czechs probably disappointed in the last race. Another chance to make it back. It's Martin Fuchser who won the first two World Cups. He was beating the Europeans by Sebastian Brendel, but he, again, he's one of the big poster boys. Sebastian Brendel won clearly two gold medals in Rio, had a bit of time off, took his time to come back into the season, won the Europeans, and is looking mean and keen now. Nuslan Fuglin from Uzbekistan. Isaiah Kuelos de Santos, three medals in the Olympic Games. Shamshirin 
from Russia, another top performer again. Adrian Bar from France did well to make the final. So again, we need to concentrate on lanes, probably four, five, six, and seven. It Expects like Quiros de Santos to go fast, but it looks like Brendel's really put his yeah, fast start. I think Brendel's gonna get out for this first 50, but Fuchs is right there with him, as well as Bella Russia in lane nine. So you can easily see the athletes apart. The yellow tip is Martin Fuchser. The white boat next to him is Sebastian Brendel. And the blue bloat with the blue stroke is Isaac Cruz de Santos from Brazil. You've got these three are going to be medalists in the C1000 for a long, long time. But it looks like Fuchs is taking it out a little fast right here in the middle. He paddles very, very smoothly, so he can kind of afford to do that. Uh, his technique is just... Uh, generation of international paddlers. His brother's also a 19-year-old coming into the mill. They actually do the C2 together sometimes. And it's also Russia putting in a move in lane number eight. Yeah, it looks like Russia might win it and beat everyone to the uh, 500. But so Santos is right there, Brendel's right there, and uh, easily striking position for him. And uh, Poland and Italy are also right. This is a very tight race right now. Rose de Santos normally goes out faster. Is he going to be able to pick up the moment or not? The Martin Fuchser has half a length lead from Sebastian Brendel, who's able to watch him. Yeah, De Santos' wife just had a baby, so maybe he's a bit distracted, but this is a much lower stroke rate than we normally see from him. But Fuchs is really taking it out right now, but Brendel's still easily within striking position with this really powerful long stroke. Uh, but Fuchs is looking very smooth. As right hit and left, the no advantage today with the flat condition. Fuchs, as you say, is looking really good. Interviewing him before, he said he's not nervous, he's just excited. All the family and friends here today. Yeah. yeah, the crowd's going to get very loud as he comes down this, uh, to the finish of this race. Might give him a little extra boost. So he's one and a half seconds ahead from Sebastian Brenner right now. And he's moving ahead slightly. Sebastian Brendel has run from two boats left back with 100 meters to go, but Martin Fuchser is taking all the adrenaline from the crowd. Yeah, it looks like he's really taking advantage of the noise that's coming out on the water just for him, but Italy's right there too. Looks like they're coming strong. So, Rios de Santos is not out of it yet. No, and he's got a very low stroke rate. He might be saving a lot for this finish. Martin Fuchser is pulling away. Brendel just did a little pickup to make sure he was staying in striking distance. He's raised his stroke rate a little bit. Remember in Milan, uh, it was uh, Simmons on the position and Brendel took it by about 100 Here's seconds. Brendel. Here they go. And Brendel is making his move, coming at the last 200 meters. This is very similar to Milan. It's going to hurt whatever the situation. The Santos is coming up well too, but Brendel's uh, stroke distance is much higher than everyone else's right now. He's clearly catching Fuchs, so we'll see what happens. Well, 150 meters to go, and every stroke he's taking about 10 centimeters. Fuchs has just picked it up as well, and this is going to be just a gut race to the finish. Here comes Brendel, though, showing his champion class. Brendel cannot lose. He doesn't know how to lose at this level. Coming into the last 100 meters, it is neck and neck again. Fuchs is going to work as well, but Brendel looks like he's slightly pulling away. 30 meters to go. It's now one meter, one and a half meters ahead. And this is built out. It's going to be a famous victory for Sebastian Brendel. Hardy for the second. A really close to third. Brazil take third. What a gutsy performance again by Brendel. Uh, he doesn't have to lose. He, 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 he hates losing more than he loves winning. And he proves that every time he goes out there for a C1 race. That was a typical finish for him. He can't argue it. Hooks a, Fuchs had a great race, but four, five, different script, same result. Yeah, he just Brendel just three, knows how to make four, it work right at the end of the, the, the last two fifty. It's great for Creole to stand to keep in it. Yeah, that, I mean he's been through uh, such an emotional roller coaster over the past few days, just uh, with his wife at home having a baby. Every day together, taking the crowd. Well, that's Fuchs. Lift gave it his all, took a bronze medal, yeah. but wanted the gold. Tom Loops are really uh, 
had a legendary finish in that race, but... Wow, what an exciting half an hour we've had. The C2500, the Canadians took it apart. We've just seen the K1 1000, now we've seen the C1 1000. Top athletes, top form, and it means a lot to them. Yeah, everyone's very emotional. This is the top of the world competition, but that was an amazingly time. I mean, in the middle of that race, there were six boats that were all right there within half a second of each other, and the Classic 3 came out on top again, but that was a very impressive race by Brendel. When we spoke to Sebastian Brendel at World Cup 1, which is Montemore, he was hoping to double up, but he had an important uh, race in the C2 1000, and he was beaten by Kretschmer and Jules. And so they didn't actually manage to double up in the internal journal trials, but he's certainly just an amazing character. And he's yeah. looking a bit like yourself. Uh, when you came off the winter, there was a, a few too many cakes, perhaps, in the body. Yeah. But now he's looking mean. Yeah, he's, uh, he's also still doubling up. I mean, he's racing C4, so, I mean, he's, he's going to be busy this weekend. But, I mean, 350. Sebastian Brendel, Carl, Germany. Martin Fox, the Czech Republic, Silva. And Zek, Rose, DeSantis, Brazil. Bronze. Yeah, and Italy was right there. I think that's uh, Carlos' uh, best result internationally for a C1 race. He's really every regatta he gets, a, he places a little bit faster and a little bit faster. That's Eighth in Rio, so right he's there. used to making the finals. We've seen some good results. We saw the C2 of well from Italy, good, looking good. So they're certainly doing something good in the C boat. We're going to have another ceremony in a couple of minutes. It's going to be C2, C2 500. Meters. It's the Olympic event for the women, according to my program. So it's a great morning. It's a little bit overcast. Uh, my weatherman, Johnny Scafield, is it going to rain? We're not quite sure, but it's quite uh, quite grey out there. It was sprinkling a little bit earlier during the men's K1000, but uh, it looks like it's cleared up a little bit now. It's really perfect conditions for racing. Well, that means it's going to be a medal ceremony. And it's the men's C2, 500 meters. Yeah, this was the race that was dominated by Russia. They did a great job. Well, they did, didn't they? They controlled the race. Yeah, from, from the first stroke to the last. The Italians, really, really happy. Yeah, that was... Uh, they were ecstatic after their finish. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the best performers in category C2 men for 500 meters. Medaille těm nejlepším závodníkům bude předávat člen Mezinárodní kanoistické federace. Medals will be handed over by the ICF treasurer, Mr. Luciano Bongfenglo. Luciano Bongfenglo, who is the next top paddler, been around many, many years, ICF. Head of the Treasury Department. A member of Team of Russia. And the Russian team official will be giving out the medals. The bronze medalist of Nikola Krasiu, Sergei Krasiu. The Krasiu brothers, they gave out the big screen at the end. They take the bronze medal, clear delight. They're really enjoying uh, every bit of this moment. It's great to see. They're, they're really appreciating what they've done. Well, they gussed it out at the end, didn't they? Yeah. Very easy. Thank you. As you can see, this event is taking place, or the, the ceremony is taking place just below the renovated five three finishing task. Nobody. That's loved, everyone. Victor Mialachi, Romania! Well, Carl and Mialachi, very strong competitors from Romania. Yeah, they were really the only ones that um, pressured the Russians at any point in the race, and it was in the beginning, but, um, you know, they had a great finish. They got a medal that's fantastic. And if my calculations are correct, it's going to be Ivan Chetil's 13th World Cup World Championship gold medal. Absolutely incredible to be that consistent for that long. 
the gold medalists and the world champions of Victor Melendez, Eva Steele, Russia! Victor Melendez, Eva Steele. The Russians can put out pretty much five or six different athletes in any combination. They're always going to be there or thereabouts. Yes. Oh, Rashkan, who we're going to see a little bit later, who's uh, had won the gold before. Yeah, that was really just the, one of the more dominant races we've seen for the whole for the whole week so far. I mean, there was no question about who won that race. Okay, well done, Russia. So, interviewing uh, Shatil earlier in the season, he's been very vocal and open about his support for the C1 category and how he wants to see it going forward. So, it's great to see him be on the medal table again. to the athletes and well done to Russia for taking the gold in the C2 500 meters. That was two guys who have actually mastered their event uh, and that was really great to see. Well the next event is the K2 200 meters and it is a very interesting situation as it is no longer Olympic event. Certain federations are not really concentrating about it. We're not going to get too political. Johnny Schofield, multiple Olympian in this event, and will multiple Olympic medalist in this event. Say what you like, but let's give it a fair go. Uh, yeah, this is really strange for me watching this event from the sidelines. Uh, it hurts a little bit, but I'm still excited to uh, see these guys do their thing. And we saw Ronnie Rao with a new partner. It doesn't seem to worry him how much he changes, even last minute. I mean, this year, Ronnie's a guy that's winning 200 meter medals at Senior World Championships since 1999. He's a, a, an absolute master of sport. Dajenko won gold in London. So uh, let's see how he managed to come, because we see quite a few new combinations are coming Absolutely. up together. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a really hard race to predict because people haven't been racing it consistently throughout the season as much. We've got some crews uh, here who is kind of showing their hands uh, for the first time. Well, these guys should be good. Christian Toro, exactly. Carlos Guerrero. Do you remember Christian Toro having to go through the uh, last minute uh, comeback situation in Duisburg last year to make the Olympics? And he did rather well there, winning the gold medal with Salah Kaviato. Yep. Hungary, the young boys. Let's see how they can do. This, they could be. They'd be one of the boats to beat. I think between the Spanish and, and them, it's going to be a tight race. Novakovic and Gurich, well, he can push 200 kilograms, but the rain is yep. a slight shower coming down. They were the former world champions as well. They're the they're current world record holder, still fastest crew ever. So there's some, there's some real quality in this event. Um, no one wants more quality than the guy in front of that boat. Um, the youngster pushing him down as well. Uh, a a newish uh, Canadian crew out there as well, the experienced Ryan Cochrane and his club K2 partner, uh, Pierre-Luc Pilin. Well, of course, Canadians made the Olympic final. It's great to see them consistently making a final at this level. It, it really is. I mean, I think they're, them and us are the only two crews that have made both uh, Olympic finals at this, this event. And uh, Ryan Sattler doing his things. We've got the uh, bronze medalist there. Really fast stuff to the Canadians. They're going to need a fast start, though, because they're going to keep up with the Spanish and Hungarians today. 
So this rain, is it just a pretty, it doesn't it to be great here today. <laughs> We're used to this, that's all like. Well, they're off 200 metres. That's very fast start for the Hungarians. Not quite as much for the Spanish, but they're going to start to charge a little bit soon. Well, they're absolutely flying at the moment. In there, just below them, is the Spanish pair, who also look very strong. But it's a case of lane number five. Hungary are really taking it out. Hungary are taking it out, and the Russia side's come through now. We've got quite sure where Spain almost in the line, with Serbia chasing a bit as well. It's already coming in the last 30 metres. It's going to be Hungary all the way, and Spain gets in second, with maybe Serbia third. Wow. I mean, if it hasn't got any less exciting, those guys are smashed in. The international circuit, they're not that well known to the Joe public. No, they're not, but they've really focused on this, this event this year. The Hungarians got a good training squad for their Mass K1 pattern as well. And they've really shown their, their science and for this event. Tricky conditions there, they're racing without a deck, but the rain starting to pour. It's a good job it didn't happen 10 minutes earlier on their boat might have been full. Spanish not quite being up there. What's the story of Sal Caviato? He's been doing a little bit of cooking, apparently. So he's been a uh, contestant for the Spanish version of MasterChef. And uh, turned out he was quite good at it, so he stayed through to all the final rounds. Is he coming back to canoeing at all? I think we're going to have to wait and see, but he's certainly got the, uh, he's got the talent, and he has still been paddling well this year in training. Well, right from the start, they look, they're lightweight, aren't they, compared to some of the giants out there, but they really they had half a metre from uh, 10 metres out. Exactly, they're relatively lightweight, and I thought perhaps with the stroke length of uh, Christian Toro, and uh, the K1 speed will go up to it and might chase them down. But no, the Hungarians absolutely held the solid by the way to the line. Well, great for Hungary. They are one of the dominant nations in this sport. I'm not sure they marked that down as a, as a, as a possible victory, but it's, uh, it's good to see that the, the men didn't fulfill their potential in the in Rio Olympics. No, absolutely. A few other countries really uh, nailed in the Olympics much, much better than them. But coming back pretty strong at this World Championships. I, I, I'm really interested to see the choice of finish in third place then as well, I'm not sure I can call it. The guys have seen them up the big screen. Germany! The crowd, the well, the crowd are being a bit stoic, because we have a heck of a shower has come down in the last five or six minutes. Yes, it shows what I know. I thought it was going to stay, uh, stay nice all day. Hungary, Bukash, Balaska take the gold. Torgo, Artu take the silver. And the Bakovic and Kroch, who have had a struggle in the last year, say, since it was uh, dropped out of the Olympics and motivational-wise, but they've uh, performed a cracking performance today. And we're moving straight on to the C1-200. Johnny, I suggest you don't step outside. You perhaps wanted to go into the corner. No, I think, yeah. <laughs> the corner of the booth, hand over to him. So it's the lineup for the C1 200 meters. Same conditions. Alfondo Benavides, he's been in many, many finals, medaled in many events in the last five or six years now. Timur Kadaov, he's been up thereabouts in the last two years. Yeah, this is kind of a, a, a mixed match final. There's a lot of people who have uh, struggled to get really onto the actual podium, but they've been very, very fast for a long time. So John Zahadji was a top junior. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting race, but I think uh, Lithuania is probably the favorite going into this one. Kovashkov, you don't bet against him. He's uh, possibly the most talented. Uh, occasionally has challenges with uh, discipline, but he's the most uh, talented, maybe, athlete in the Russian team. Yeah, he had an incredible C2 race in Milan. Adel Modulam Imagahamadam from Iran again, consistently making finals at this level. Yeah, he's an incredibly powerful and also uh, technically efficient paddler. He's going to be tough to beat in this race as well. And Zaza Nadiraze is also making many finals. Andrew Kreto, hi if you're watching. And the rain's still coming down, so uh, we'll see who's uh, most used to these kinds of conditions. But same concept. Belarus. And because just a sus missed the Olympic final and was absolutely distraught over that. Yeah. And he's come back with a vengeance. He won the U23s, I believe, in uh, Romania this year. And Lewinetsky from Poland. Again, there might be problems with the motivation as this has come out of the Olympic cycle. So it's again, it's a stuff that we're not going to mention, but there are stories behind stories of why, why certain things might happen.
Kamov Ashkov in four. Is that Leopard Crimpo from our end? Adele there. So 200 meters at the 2017 World Championships in Rachiti. It's about 50 kilometers away from Prague. It still looks like a straight tailwind, so there should be no benefits to any of these paddlers from left to right. So uh, it's going to be like nice high stroke rates. So I expect pretty good times. Jonathan Hadju, top junior. Slighter build than the others. Can we come through in this, what's going to be turned out to be a dogfight in these competitions? Well, they've been held a little bit on the blocks. Too many people pushing the blocks, trying to get a little edge there. I guess the start of this event, as we saw with the uh, the men in the K2s, is absolutely crucial. 200 meters, flat out. Kovashkov in lane number four had a good start. Vadel also had a good start at the bottom of your picture. Lubienski is also there. Jonathan Hadju from Hungary. They make their way down. It does look like Come Timor uh, Kadarov from Kazakhstan is also putting it out there. And Georgia. Georgia's running there too. Kazarov from Georgia is also putting it out. We've lost the picture for a couple of seconds, but luckily, as we're live, we can see them coming through. There we go. We're starting the picture in lane number seven. It is Artin Kozwez. The really leaning forward. He's got a very forward stroke. He's keeping all of his power going all the way forward. Very oh, efficient. The line in lane number seven. He takes it. Uh, so Cosway, who certainly didn't have the pass at the start, he just kept building the momentum all the way. Yeah, he really just stayed forward and uh, made sure all of his power was just going into the forward motion and wa no wasted energy in the back of his stroke. That was, uh, that's how that finish happened. That was all technical. That's really impressive that I have a, a subpar you know, start. He's looking ridiculously relaxed. Six, Someone is definitely not sure he's won. Yeah. He's a guy's up being quite careful with the thermic shock possibilities. They've yeah. given it their all, and then suddenly they can be very dangerous. And of course, there's uh, all the lactic and stuff too. It's just, uh, we saw Paul yeah. Ashkov a couple of years ago. Where it was in a really sticky situation. He spent a couple of minutes in the water. It looks like Adele has a medal. That's fantastic. He's been fighting for one of those for a long time. It's great that he finally came through with one. If that really happened. Kora Voskov looked like he had a little bit of a subpar start by his standards. He just didn't do anything spectacular, did he? He kept the pressure on all the way through. Yeah. Comes right out from Belarus. Says the second Belarus victory of the day. We saw Vola Kudenska winning the 500 meters in the second event, just edging out Lisa Carrington, Emma Jorgensen. Clear victory there. It looks in second place at line number six, could it be? It could be. That's like Georgia, from Georgia, if it is the case. Third place is going to be very, very tight. I can't wait to see these times. It's amazing how some athletes exteriorize all their emotions. Yeah. And some just, I guess, keep it inside. Yeah. Yeah, he seemed very mellow for just winning the world championships. <laughs> There's, uh... Power there. Yeah, that's uh, he's a big boy. <laughs> well, wow. Belarus, Georgia, Iran, Koza Nazudev, Modjalam, Imagaham, 0.44 back. Kovashkov just missing out this time, but that's uh, well, you can see how happy Iran are with this uh, great result. It's well deserved. He's been working very hard on changing. Little bit by little bit every year, just improve for this extremely tough event. There's absolutely no room for error in that race, and he did a great job. Well, it shows the difference between third and fourth. Yeah. There we have the silver and gold medalist together. It's pretty hard to make a finish happen at 200 meters. That was a, that was a really impressive thing to be able to do. <laughs> What's great is we have many, many viewers from Russia, so from Russia rather, so you can hopefully understand without translation. <laughs> well, 
We're going out. to have another ceremony, and it's going to be the C1 men 1000. Okay. We got some loyal fans staying out here, sticking it out in the rain. Well, if, if you're in Richichi, you're not here to sightsee. Yeah. <laughs> Marley Brooks is reflective on here. There you see is the poster boy. And the Germans. So as you can hear, perhaps it's the C1 1000 meters. The medals will be handed over by the Vice President of the ICF, Mr. Tomas Konietzko. Tomas Konietzko, very well known figure, ICF Vice President. Accompanied by the team of Germany, Jens Karl. Jens Karl, who is the uh, team leader for Germany. The bronze medalist is Isaquitas Cleros dos Santos, Brazil. Brazil take the medal. Isaquitas Cleros dos Santos, three medals from Rio. And he has one kidney due to an accident when he's 10 years old. Yeah, very impressive race by him, going through all of everything he's going through. They'll keep it together and so come out with a medal that shows a lot of grit. The silver medalist is Martin Fuxa. Martin Fuxa wins the silver medal. It must be annoying if you're in the same generation as Brendel. Yes, he's uh, showing a lot of emotion. He had a great race. It's uh, just really unfortunate that uh, he's currently racing against the fastest canoe of all time. The gold medalist and the world champion category C1 man 4,000 meters is Sebastian Brendel. Sebastian Brendel, the warrior from Germany, takes another gold medal. London champion, Rio double champion, multiple world champion. And he has a word for everyone. He spent about half an hour in the press center yesterday just, uh, just chatting to everyone. Yeah. He goes, comes in and has a chat. He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. I mean, just absolutely the epitome of a champion Dame in every way. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Germany. Sebastian Brendel, the great champion, takes yet another gold medal. And huge emotions on Fuxa. Difficult to say whether he's happy or sad. There's a lot of emotions there. It's great to see. It shows how much it means to all these guys. Well, these guys are taking the sport forward in their own countries, really, in their own way. Yeah, they are. Poster they are. boys. The poster boys are the great role models for, for for tech kids like the ones watching there today, who probably had a great experience and uh, will maybe be there in a few years' time themselves. So it 
their program moves on. The next event we're going to have is the K2 500 meters. And it's again, it's an open field. We have some, maybe some surprises. Rennie Paul Pauls Paulsen's in there. We have the flying French athletes, uh, Sebastien Juve and Guillaume Le Floc de Cochemont have been on scintillating form this year. These two boys have been around a while. Pedashenka and Valke, they've been around forever, haven't they, really? Oh, yeah, yep, Pedashenka in particular. Normally in the front of uh, a crew boat, their career of stroking the K2s and K4s, only guide to one medals over 1,000 or 200 and 500 at Olympic level. Um, amazing technical paddler and a, and a big, old, big old guy. Jan Staber, who again is a uh, massive experience in many boats, is experiencing this guy is coming in again. Yeah, I mean, today is going to be really interesting now that we've got the K4 500 back in the Olympic program. The K2 500 uh, starts to take on a little bit of a different complexion again. So we've got a lot of guys racing this event who will also be in the K4 500. And we saw the impact of that with the world record going at the Europeans uh, just a few weeks ago. Well, Marcus Cooper Walsh making sure the hair's in place. Always immaculate when you see photographs of him. <laughs> Such a nice guy. <laughs> Born in England guy. and is the Olympic champion for 1,000 meters. Hasn't quite made the form back this year yet, but is uh, clearly enjoying a bit oh, of fun well. in, a, in a crew boat. Yes, I mean, their big event this, this weekend is going to be the K4 500, and they've taken two paddlers out of uh, each end of that boat, have gone and done the K2 200 and the K2 500, respectively. Um, they were both out there to win those events, so... The, their, their crewmates got second in the K2 200. Let's see if they can go one better in the five now. Well, we've seen Hungary already take uh, a gold in the K2 200. Ben Nadas and Sandor Toktika, who so has experience left. at this level. Let's see sure. what they can do. I mean, there are, I think there are current world record holders. They took a long standing record a few weeks ago at the European Champs. So they really have put the, uh, put the marker down. Linka and Eric Vlajcek again, someone who's been around for a while. An incredible amount of experience. Um, a real master of the K4 and K2 is. is, is Let's hope Rennie Holt and Paulson can hold it together. He hasn't had the best day so far. He with, hasn't. Uh, no. has, well, but he's, he's asking a lot of himself, but he has high standards, and, uh, and he's going to be strong towards the end of this race, so they may well come through. Next generation of Australians, uh, Ellis and McTavish. Let's see what they can pull through. Good yep. to get to the final. Oh, amazing to make a final to see uh, on 23s from Australia getting in there against the big guys and I'm sure they won't be afraid they've got a great coaching team who will just be turned to go out there and give everyone a hard time. Rajiv double world champion with Arnold a few years back now was it 2010 2011 I believe. Exactly yep they, they picked us on both those occasions great paddler really thick guy um, it's gonna be interesting to see what they can do in really flat conditions. So 500 meters. <laughs> I mean, look at the Stargate system move there under the power of everyone Everyone going a bit early, it was quite impressive. So far this week, I don't believe there's been any disqualifications. There's been a few athletes, including Ian Ross, who have actually missed their racing because they've misunderstood the changing timetables, which is, which is really horrible for them. That's never great. That's, that's, that's never good. What we're going to see is empty lanes on racing. But we've got everyone here gearing up again for start number two. 500 metres. Well, great start from the Hungarians. Looks like the... Slovaks forgot to start. Yes, but they're big guys, big guys, they can pull it back. The Hungarians, they're snappy. That is really impressive stuff. So 500 metres, can you pace yourself to go 80% all the way? The, it's, it's the hardest event. You've got to be on a red line all the time. If you go too hard, you will pay. So it's a long, long sprint. Jermaine so. and Cooper so far leading it out with the highly favoured young Hungarian. They're looking, oh, looking good. Good. they're looking good, but then look at the relaxation of Cooper. He seems to be setting that boat up really well. They've still got a long stroke. They've come down the middle part of the race. That's the effect that's going to give them the ability to pull up to the line. Yeah. Over halfway already. And the 200 metres to go. It looks like it's going to be a two-boat race for the win. And they're really close to third place as well. So that gives them time to pull away from the field. But it's amazing how they've taken the field apart. So it's Spain against Hungary. They really have. This could be two of the best crews we've ever seen in this event. Well, France coming back at the top of the picture. The Belarusians are not out of it yet. I saw Kirchenko having six goals yesterday morning, so he has the power of coming he into the line. He has his head down in that the first lane of the first sounds that pushes the line. Spain are going to take a famous victory. Pulling ahead even now as we speak, and it's going to be very close to second. It looks like Hungary take the second. Belarus, no. 
Christian Toro in the back there. Sorry, Rodrigo, sorry. Gamale in the back there. Pushing him all the way. He had a good K1 at the Europeans a few weeks ago as well. And that is a really classy 500 meter boat. Look at that stroke length towards the end. This is what you want to be able to do is hold your form right up to the line, even though it must be hurting like hell. <laughs> and just on a personal note, can you, uh, are your lungs big enough to go in this event? <laughs> no, probably not at that pace, but I could give it a go. This was the event I actually started my uh, my sprint career after I switched over from Wild Water. I raced K2500 with Ben Brown. We weren't so bad at it, but I'd say some of these guys, the power they've got to take you to a new level. Johnny Scafield, Great Britain, is with me today. So every race we've actually seen someone really take it out and grab the victory. Absolutely, but then we've had, um, we had a, the Germans in the, in the C1000 and the K1000s with amazing finishes. They seem to, Jeremy and Czech are giving us some exciting races to the line. 127.9. That's, uh, that's a pretty impressive time for those conditions. Spain, Hungary, Belarus take the medals with Slovakia just missing out. Yes, absolutely. After that start, like you said, they've maybe given them such a little bit too much to do. That turned out to be the case. Look at the pain on Rodrigo's face in the back of that boat there. Well, this is a. Uh, one of the most anticipated events, I guess. It's a case of K2 500. Lisa Carrington was in the water about an hour ago. Dieta Weber, the London Olympic champions, have been chilling it for the last while. Johansson and Wilberg from Sweden. The Swedes are uh, putting together quite a few teams. We talked about the young Swedes about five years ago. They're all maturing now, aren't they? They're maturing and they'll be really stoked to have made, made this final for that, for that crew there. It's a big step forward from Moa. Pieter Mikolajcek, Anna Praska, again, these are Four, two of the four or five top Polish girls who've been around for the last many, many years. Mikolaj checks many, many medals. Yeah, she's strong across the board, K1000 uh, and in the K4 many, many times. But Forever then, uh, Dinietzi here, yeah. you have had a few challenges in the last couple of years. They have, but they know this event better than anyone. They look like they're in the zone. Yeah, they do that, don't they? They had a new crew here, so this is the excitement for me in this race. We've got Ponomarenko stepping out of a K1 at uh, uh, world level for the first time. Um, obviously, because she thinks it's going to be a good fast boat. And uh, Anja Osterman, also, we've seen her in action, but don't discount Tamara Takac and Ineta Vad. No, I think that the, the two top crews you're most likely looking at here is the, the Kiwis there, with Carrington and Ryan, and uh, the Hungarians as well. But also, the Ukrainians, they've been there or thereabouts a couple of times this year. Robert Panovska, the French, uh, won the K4 in Serbia. Austin's in trial, and are we going to have time to see the Australians? Yes, of course. The, uh, They're a good pair of the endurance legends in that boat. They, have, they seem to have more fun than anyone else. New Zealand in their distinctive black with the fern on it are really looking good, but the producers have shown the Takac, the Hungarian boat, a little bit back, but it's very much a case at the moment. It's Germany against New Zealand. Yeah, and the Ukraine actually holding them as well, as well, uh, holding them well as well, and then that easy speed from Carrington that she's giving to the boat there, backed up by Kathleen Ryan. It's a real test of the stammer, isn't it? Because I think Lisa Carrington, the only athlete who's been on the water so far away, she's still on medal about an hour ago, but they're taking it away. It doesn't seem to be holding her back. Absolutely impeccable technique. And you see they've got their shoulders down, and next to the legs, eyes focused on the finish line. And that's really Where you well. see Lisa's eyes, they're killer eyes, aren't they? <laughs> she looks like she's in the zone, that's for sure. Scary stuff. Top of your picture is the powerful poles who are not out of it yet. So let's go, Mikolajcek. But the halfway with 200 meters to go, and it's New Zealand. They're really doing the lightweight train, they're not out of it yet. They're absolutely flying, but we've got a real line for the second and third 
of legs. That technique's amazing. Look at Cameron Lyons. Full body movement there. She's using her legs and her arms as much as possible. Also a medal in individual events. We're going to see them in the K4. We're coming up to about 130 meters to go. It's New Zealand are really saying, I want this. They do, and then we've got Polymer close. She's pushed that boat. We're into second place now. Third place being really tight. Up to Germany, Hungary, and Ukraine. Let's be honest, it's an exhibition for New Zealand. They come there with a boat length ahead. It's going to be desperately tight for second place. New Zealand first, Germany, and it looks like we can get taken a medal. Wow, wow. What a race. Bench presses 90 odd kilograms. Is it going to? Yes, I mean, she's, uh, she's, she's lightweight and she's strong, and that's a hard combination to beat. Right, uh, Kate Lynn Ryan like was talked about going through the Three, process. I think it works there. Yeah, I mean, they had, they pretty much have to link us on. They just did their own race. They also did their race plan, knew what they could do, what they could not do. There is a definition of exhaustion. Oh, all those girls have just emptied themselves, haven't they? Absolutely, all the way to the line. Maybe that's one of them. Well, it looks like the Slovenians, you have a, a, a limited team, massive in slalom, but they only have a yeah. few. There's Zos Jakusek, clearly. Pomerenko's been putting forward with the, uh, the flag for the last few years. Osterman looks like she's stepped up. Hungary, nowhere to be seen at this level. But Danita Kozak is out of it. Now, clearly, she medaled three times in the London Olympics. Sorry, in the last Olympic career. Great work by, look how powerful they are, the New Zealand. It's just that combination, like I say, of power. And Look at that slow motion. No one's going to beat her. No, she wasn't you very rarely really see her eyes. Look at that. Do, like I say, it shows how the group handlers they keep their heads still, keeps the boat balanced, and they look forward. They keep their chin up and they look forward. And she was doing that to perfect for that. Oh, close, close for the finish there between Ukraine and the Germans for third place. Well, Caitlin's giving it all. Look at that. She is. <laughs> this coming with a little smile. She very well shows emotion. Smile. That's amazing, isn't it? I mean, you, you, you know, you've got to keep your emotions in check until the race is done, and then it's hard to stop it coming out. It shows on her face how much she's hurting there. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that will have been painful, but it hurts a lot less when you win, I can tell you that. And the good news for you, Great Britain, you've pinched their coach, haven't you? Probably that's not the right political thing to say. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't know about pinch, but yeah, we've... we've We've got the good fortune to have Rene, Rene Olsen working with us uh, starting in, in October and he's done a fantastic job with those girls. Um, really as they've worked together as a team, they've produced several world class boats. Ryan Carrington, gold medalist, world champions, New Zealand, Dieter Weber have to settle for second place silver medal and Pomerenko, Janic and Osterman take the bronze medal. Yeah, yeah, time there as well, 138. <laughs> so, it's quite impressive. She's so well media trained, we're not going to see a swear word. <laughs> I'm sure about that. And she knows that I had her the commentary a couple of times now, and she now knows that there's a cat, there's a microphone there. Yeah, it's going to be there for the champions, that's for sure. Well done, guys. It's still, still breathing pretty hard for the, for the strength of that effort. It's nice to see Deason Weber. They've been through a lot together, many, many finals in this event. It still means a lot. Well, I think they gave it their all, didn't they? Oh, they did and they had to. You know, the field feels there. A lot of strength and depth across the board. And Slovenia, as you said, it's a, it's a new combination and it seems to work. It's really exciting to see every time that we get, we get new countries um, putting out boats in different events. That's exciting. It's good for our sport. Um, so they're going to be ones that are, yeah, going to be pushing out all the way through this Olympic cycle, I'm sure. <laughs> a big hug there. Whether she's on the camera or not, I think that's pure emotion. Oh, it is. That would have been a nerve-wracking experience getting to the start line there and to get, get such an impressive result. Uh, all the emotions coming out. So we're moving fast through the programme. Johnny Schofield from Great Britain is giving us the benefit of his uh, experience. We're actually on the fin well, sorry, 20 metres away from the finishing line. There's no win, but there's been a fair amount of rain in the last 20 minutes, but it hasn't dampened the crowd. There's now two big stands. There used to be just one, but the Czechs have put a lot of effort in the last year or so to really bring these facilities up to up to the grade. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. No, no, it's a really good, it's a really good place to race, especially when you've got big Czech crowds making so much noise. So let's see what is next on the programme. We've just seen the K2 Women A final. We're going to have the K2 
K2 200 meter ceremony, I believe now. So we see the guys taking the applause from the crowd. It's going to be a good Hungarian contingent here to celebrate that win. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's, I'm not sure it was a surprise because it's uh, it's always everyone has a, the same chance, but it was great for Hungary to come through. Yeah, it was a really good crew to really good crew to see. It's nice to see guys still uh, still taking this event really seriously and uh, you know pushing the limits. They did a 30.9, I think, in really flat conditions. That's a really impressive standard. Mark is happy there. He's, he said he had he's really happy. struggled in the last uh, in the last year so oh. after his, uh, his his disappointment in the Olympics. Absolutely, he keeps a smile on his face like a true champion, even through even through his disappointments. Um, he goes out there, gives his best, and uh, plays really well. He's top champion. Medals with the will be handed over by the ICF board of. Uh, by the member of ICF Board of Directors, Mr. Shoken Narita. Narita, well-known personality from the Asian continent. Obviously, it's a key few years for him with Tokyo taking over the, the bat to host the Games in three years' time. Only three years. Yeah, absolutely. Time flies towards Tokyo, and everyone's going to be looking at Japan for training venues and getting out there for experience conditions. The Virgin Grich and Marko Novakovic take the take the bronze medal. Yep, Never well, hope if you're listening uh, back in Serbia, you're enjoying this. I mean, uh, the world's fastest uh, ever K2 200 meter paddlers pushed down to third. It shows the depth of this event still. Even when they win the or winning the K1 individuals, they said, no, no, we prefer to, to race together. A couple of years ago, they beat uh, Derek Tovic, both of them. And Marcus said, no, no, we'll give him the place. We'll go. They really, really enjoy this event. Yeah, a really good partnership. And they're, they're now also forming the engine room in that Serbian K4 500 meters which is for sure going to be one of the fastest of the night. The silver medalist is Sestavai. The silver medalist are Carlos Garot and Christian Toro, Spain. Carlos Garot and Christian Toro, both absolute flyers. I guess when they gel a bit, they, they have some serious power. Oh, I mean, that's good. That would be an extremely hard crew to beat. Olympic K2 champion Christian Toro. And Carlos has absolutely been on form in his K1 this year as well. He flies off the block normally, doesn't he? He does. He's a re relatively small guy compared to some of the guys out there but with um, an immense amount of strength and power as well. So that's a, uh, it's a really good combination for getting off the line. And the winners, 20 and 21 years old. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, we've got a lot of talent to put into their, into their power bucks for the future. Mark Velasca, Balad, Burkash. The gold medalist and the world champions of category K2 men for 200 meters are Planning there, jump off the podium. There we go, well executed. Taking the applause from the massive Hungarian contingent here. Enjoying the moment. Good support. You see all the flags out there. You have the, the Brits, the Canadians, Slovakia. I mean, it's great. It's a really, really multinational sport. We saw Iran taking a medal earlier in the C1 as well. So we're really getting, getting across the world and there's interest across the thousand world. athletes and 70 nations. And obviously we've had a lot of fun as well with the power canoes who've been uh, really performing at a high level. The times are dramatic coming down. Oh, race by race they're coming down. I mean, the guys know they have to go away and basically be on, on world record pace to be able to come back to the next competition and uh, take a medal. Berkash, Berkashka. Next generation Hungarians. The Hungarians are quite smart, aren't they? They've had a few natural clear outs this year, and now they're building for Tokyo. They just have so much strength and depth, they can always put out a good boat.
great being around the Hungarians. They always have their big drums. Yeah, they've got a passion, passion for the sport, absolute passion and, and knowledge as well. So they're a great crowd to have around. So the next event is going to be the K2 Women 1000. And over the last six years I've been doing this game, I think I've introduced about eight teams. <laughs> they really do mix and match, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. I guess, um, I guess at times people see it uh, uh, as a development event or, or guys wanting to test themselves over, over, no, over, over another distance. So those crews mix up. We never know quite who's going to be the one to beat. Nisnar, Alana, Bry, look here. I think we're going out live to Canada. So uh, it's morning's ticking on at the moment. Very early morning for some of you. You've had some, uh, you had a good finalist in the K2 200. Roberts and MacArthur again in Australia. It's the other end. So it'll be your evening. Hello if you're watching. They look pretty focused on there. They'll be preparing very well for this. Really tricky event to pace. K2000. It's uh, got to go hard off the line but it's still a fairly long way, so if you overcook it, you very well pay. One of the best races I saw was the final. Was it in Moscow, I think, where uh, Henrietta and uh, Emma came, came back in the K2 2000 in the last few metres and won the gold medal? Medvedsky, who is a K1 specialist 1000, she's looking to do something good. Gerbart and Medard, again, on the verges of the top K4 team. Absolutely. The strength and depth of Germany means they will be putting out good Good, event, good boats in every single event, so they will be ones worth watching. Romania, Kaminescu, Loic, perhaps missing international competition for various reasons. Sebitova, who's been around forever, Salakova. Yeah, they're really great technicians, these two, so we'll just to see how they pace it. And Kazakhstan, Ringova, Nashenko. The home, the home paddlers, they're going to be loving this experience. Uh, the first athletes we have born in 2001 and 2002. Well, that, that Sobiskova and Galanova. Young athletes, um, they're going to soak up this experience and be motivation for the future, I'm sure. So 15 and 16 years old. Do you have a clear favourite here? Those I'm not too sure about, you know, you wouldn't look too much further than Hungary, Poland, Germany. They just have so much history in all these events. And pass down the knowledge, they'll have good, good athletes in these boats. So it's the K2, 1,000 metres, live, Richichi. Sounds like we're picking up the noise of one of the generators. Yeah, it's a bit noisy. You've seen a bit of a, a tiny bit of a tailwind for the last few races. So we could see some fast times again. We've had a few challenges in the last three or four races. Is this over-excitement? The feedback I'm getting from the athletes who've been out there is that the, uh, the, the starters are falling at a slightly different rhythm to usual, which is a bit off-putting for the athletes. So we're used to a certain certain rhythm, how it's going to go. And when it's significantly different from that, you start to see problems with false starts like we're, like we're seeing here. But hopefully no disqualifications. Meters and in lane number seven, it is the Russians Salkova and Sobotova with Gerhardt and Medhart from Germany. Maybe something to prove. Spots are still open in the K4 there. That's Top of your picture also is the Aussies who have a fast start with Canada not out of it. It is, yeah. The Aussies have really taken it out hard. Like I said, they look pretty focused and they're, they're rating fairly high. They're kind of tapping it along. Let's see if they're fit enough to, to keep it all the way to the end. Well, if you're new to the sport, the boys are every 10 metres. You have to stay in the middle of a nine-metre lane. And the chaps having, mainly chaps, to be fair, having fun on the bicycles are the coaches. Yep, They're the not coaches. allowed tannoys, are they? They have to just use their own voice. So they're not meant to be coaching the athletes at all. They, they can watch, they can take on information, but they're not meant to give anything back to the athletes racing. Once you're out there, you're on your own. Well, three votes in a row. Kazakhstan, Germany, and the clear green of Australia in the top of your picture. A long Absolutely. way to go, but very flat water, which is good. It's lovely water. I mean, all the way through the day, the conditions have been extremely fair, which is really all the athletes want. They want a fair race track to go and uh, show their performance. This year, we've had some fun. We had Montemore, which was uh, lovely and warm, but a bit of a crossweed. Wind, rather. We had staggeringly fast times with warm and a strong tailweed in Seged. And wind, but we, maybe Serbia there, a few problems. But here they go. It looks like, is it the Germans? So we've got the, uh, the Hungarians pushing through, the Germans are sitting back, 
real great contrast of technique. You see there, I'll show you the top of our picture. They're tapping away a little bit, quite a high rate, but efficient with their shoulders down. And you see a long reach from the high gaze there. They're trying to move further on each stroke, hitting the water with a lot of power on the first one. A big challenge though by the uh, Kazakh crew at the bottom here. I'm not sure if they'll be aware that they're pushing so hard, they'll be out of their field of view. 148 at the split. Pretty handy. Let's see if they can keep it going all the way. Good noise from the knowledgeable crowd as they come up to the well in the second half of the race now. It looks like in lane number four, the Hungarians who probably have 200 athletes that you can put around in an international match. Yeah, they absolutely can. And they, they have a technical model. That means they all have very uh, compatible techniques. They can put two votes together, even different votes quite easily, and consistently reduce top to bottom down to two votes. Two Germans are making a move now, the Australians are playing for that early effort. Canada at the top of the picture, still in it, but it looks like lane number four and lane number eight, as you can see, are really turning the screw a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Canada are paddling really, really nicely. They may well struggle to get a medal from this event, but they're, they're really mixing it up and their techniques are strong. And they're coming up to 200 metres to go, and over a boat length for the young Hungarians. Well, I'd say young, but not so young, as uh, Medvecki is uh, 29 years old. Yeah, she's the experience of the in that boat. Gerb had a Medhart also in there. It's a bit deceptive because the Hungarians are out of your picture. Yes, there you go. it's the big race. I think the uh, Germans are going to clearly into the second place now. And actually, we've got the Polish going to keep up with the next time the bar, top of the screen there. I have no doubt about who's going to take it away. So two races for Lisa this morning. The C1 men, well, we don't need to tell the result because you could guess it anyway. Sebastian Brendel beat Martin Cooks and beat Isaac Coyos de Santos. The K1 men, a bit of a surprise. Tom Leibischer, maybe. He really held his form. Dostal was a disappointing third in that race. What else do we have? Fender course was second. The K2 A final, 200 meters, was the Hungarians. The C1 men was a bit of a surprise there. Moving forward, the K2 men, 500 it's a great, great uh, results, and we have, as you said, we've seen victories right across the board. Apart from the Czech Republic, I guess they had Dostin and Fuxa in there, but two medals, I guess you have to take something away with that. Absolutely, uh, Adam K Van Koven had said to me once that you can never be disappointed with the colour of, uh, of an Olympic or world medal. Uh, when you reflect on it, they'll be happy and proud of what they've done. I see we are talking in the hall. <laughs> Well, here we go, Hungary, gold, Germany silver, Poland just sneaking out ahead of Kazakhstan to take the bronze medal. Really, really impressive race there. So, one more race to go, it's going to be the K2 1000, and here they are lining up. Zoric Tomasiewicz, the silver medalist from Rio, in their gross and half, a uh, different combination. Obviously, Gross won the gold in Rio. Gross and half won the Europeans uh, six weeks ago. Kubilov Penner put a staggeringly fast time a few weeks ago. Turks and Kars, it's uh, getting right across the board, this quality, isn't it? Oh, it really is. And, uh, that, that really interesting new crew of, uh, of Gross and Hoff. Gross already Olympic champion in this event. Hoff, top K1 paddler, coming together. And then it's Max Hoff been really in the zone this weekend. 
But yeah, I mean, they seem to be moving that crew back really well now. Spicer and Havel, masses of experience. Spicer's second race. It looks like it's the Spanish who have about half a metre difference in size, but it certainly does seem to work with Kubilos and Penner <laughs> taking it out. But it looks like Max Hoff is taking a slight lead at the moment. Max is working hard already. This is a real scary event. He has got the line, line well, but again, it's long. Of course, Max Hoff took the bronze medal in K1 2000 in London, gold medal in, uh, in Rio. Marcus Gross also took a double gold medal in Rio. Marcus Gross is you know, maybe the, the best K2 paddler of his, of his generation, perhaps the superstar of this event. At the bottom of the field is Jacobs, Spicer, and Daniel Havel still looking for the performance. Absolutely. Could this be the, uh, could this be the result of the check today? They're on the outside lane. They could still be a surprise. Like you said, there's so many different combinations with the K4 1000 coming out. Uh, different athletes and some are stepping down to the K4 500 and some are going to the twos. But so far, it looks like the lane number four, the Serbians, who have medaled in top top events, are really taking on the pace. Yeah, they're, they're, they're two relatively small guys as well compared to the others. They seem to be um, focusing on this event year after year. And they perhaps have a little bit more experience than some others in, in this event, exactly. Changed a couple of times, rather the leader changed a couple of times, it's neck and neck. Chuck Cabot looking good then. They are looking good, you know, if, if you can save energy on the first half of this place, you can unleash uh, a bit of time to sort of leave should do for the men's K1000. Well this is going to be a fight, you can see Max Hoff really gritting it in there. It is, it just needs to keep the technique together. This is the point where we have to save our fast, even when it's hurting and even when you're putting in the maximum power. Well, you can see a big push here from the Serbians. The Serbians are just taking their weight up a little bit. They're keeping their body, they're keeping the body, they're keeping the technique nice and compact. And just tapping away with a higher, higher racing. Whereas most of them are reaching for it. Lithuania looking interesting at the top of the picture for the medal, but here are the dominant two. Yeah, but there's still Carmen back in that boat, isn't he? Taken out of the Olympic program, but he found his slot in K2000 again. 
through the arms on there. Yeah, they're not small even for these endurance paddlers. It really is a, it's a strength endurance sport. You've got to have big lungs, but you've got to have muscles as well. Sylvia! Yeah. <laughs> happy guys there. Good job, well done. Zoric to Resovic, take the goals, Kriere to Gele Botic, take the silver Slovakia, and Havel and Spicer take the bronze medal with Grace and Hoff, just missing out, finishing fifth behind the Hungarians. Yeah, they'll be a bit disappointed with that, they were looking really good at the Euros, um, it looks like they clicked together as a group, but when you're under World Championship pressure, that's when you're really tested. The reason we're being hard to be heard is because the Czechs are in your picture. That's almost a victory for them. Oh. Uh, I don't know, I'm just sorry. Taking a moment from the back getting the option to stand on the podium. Um, yeah, something money can't buy. <laughs> well, that's been a lot of fun this morning. Hope you've enjoyed it where you are. There's some of these, there's hundreds and hundreds of fish, aren't they? How clear the water is. They get fed under the bridge, which they, they have the, the happiest fish in the world, I think. Yeah, so I think it's going to go for food as well. Thanks so much for, for stepping up to the mark and uh, giving us the benefit of your insight. We'll be joining you again this afternoon, Central European time, from 15.20 to show you about 20, 19, I believe, semi-finals. Uh, so this is all these starting with the C2 men, 1,000, and going all the way to the K4 women, 500, I'm as late as ever. And <laughs> this shows that one of the questions is, uh, was rather quite happy, Tom Leibischer took the 1,000 metres. Big day for Germany. Dostal's father is thinking, oh no, what happened there? He took a bronze, and there's Joseph Dostal. What a great character. He is Friend a success for me. He's a Swiss guy. Probably all I think, aren't they? Really? All you medalists at uh, Olympians who said to me, great, uh, I'm asking this to push it out. And here's the K2 200 winners, and that's what it means to win a world championship medal and become the 2017 world champion. Well. Well, as long as it's not religious or political, you can pretty much do what you like. You like some good taste. Yeah, I'm not sure it's always a good taste. After <laughs> <laughs> the Russians. Marcus, Cooper Walls, Daisy Ryan, and the determination of Lisa Kang to play two out of four done for her. Silver medal and a gold medal so far. The so many, by the way, the medal so will be stacking them up every five or six in the next few minutes. Právě teď vám představujeme ty nejlepší závodníky kategorie C1 muži 200 metrů. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the best paddlers in category C1 men 200 meters. Medaile těm nejúspěšnějším závodníkům bude předávat člen Mezinárodní kanoistické federace. Medals will, medals will be presented by ICF Board of Directors member Mr. Ahmad Dunia Mali. A tým lídr běloruského národního týmu. Accompanied by the team leader of team of Belarus, Sergei Kmelkov. Bronzovou medaili vybojoval... The bronze medalist is... Adel Mujalia Magdan Iran.
Příprvním medailistou finálového závodu mistrovství světa se stává do silové medaliště Zazna na generace Georgia. Zlatou medaili ve finále mistrovství světa kategorie C1 může 200 metrů vybojoval The gold medalist, the world champion in the category C1 Marco 200 meters is Arstem Fogler Delarus Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Belarus.
pánové, je připraveno vyhlášení finálového závodu kategorie K2 muži 500 metrů. Ladies and gentlemen, the elbow ceremony of category K2 men 500 meters is ready. Právě teď vám představujeme ty nejlepší závodníky kategorie K2 muži 500 metrů. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the best models in category K2 men 500 meters. Medaile těm nejlepším závodníkům bude předávat předseda Českého svazu kanoistů. Medals will be handed over by the president of Czech Canoe Union, Mr. Jan Boháč. A společně s tím lídr španělského týmu. Accompanied by Mr. Ekaiz Saez, the team leader of Spanish team. Bronzovou medaili vybojovali The bronze medalist A Vitaly Bialko, Roman Piatrušenka, Belarus!
dalšího vyhlášení je připraveno vyhlášení nejlepší závodnic kategorie C2 na 500 metrů. Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony of C2 women 500 meters is ready. Dámy a pánové, právě teď vám představujeme ty nejúspěšnější závodnice kategorie C2 ženy 500 metrů. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the best partners in category C2 women for 500 meters. Medaile těm nejúspěšnějším finalistkám bude předávat viceprezident Mezinárodní kanoistické federace. Medals will be handed over by vice president of the ICF, Mr. Tomas Koněcko. V doprovodu se zástupcem kanadského svazu. Accompanied by, by Casey Wade, Secretary General of Canadian Federation. Bronzovou medaili vybojovali. The bronze medalists are Alena Nazdrova, Kamila Wobber, Belarus.
Dámy a pánové, vracíme se na stupně vítězů. Je připraveno vyhlášení nejlepších závodnic kategorie K2 ženy 500 metrů. Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony of category K2 women for 500 meters is ready. A právě teď je můžete na vlastní oči vidět ty nejlepší závodnice mistrovství světa K2 ženy 500 metrů. Medaile těm nejúspěšnějším bude předávat zástupkyně Mezinárodní kanoistické federace. Medals will be handed over by ICF Board of Directors member Mrs. Marie Burnett. V doprovodu s generálním sekretářem Mezinárodní kanoistické federace. Accompanied by Mr. Simon Tewson, Secretary General of the ICF. Třetí místo na mistrovství světa vybojovali The bronze medalists are Spela Ponomarenko Janic and Anja Osterman Slovenia. Zíbrnou medaily a druhé místo získávají The Silver Medalist O, Franziska Weber, Tina Dice, Červeny. Mistrněmi světa pro rok 2017 kategorie K2 ženy 500 metrů se stávají The gold medalists and the world champions in category K2 women for 500 meters are Lisa Crankton, Caitlin Ryan, New Zealand! Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of New Zealand. Lisa Crankton, Katie Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, please show recognition to the best in category K2 women for 500 meters.
Gratulace směřují k těm nejlepším kákářkám. Pánové, připravte se, protože právě teď je připraveno vyhlášení nejlepších finalistů mistrovství světa kategorie K1 muži 1000 metrů. Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony of category K1 men for 1000 meters is ready. Jako na zlatém podnosu vám teď přinášíme ty nejlepší kajakáře jednoho kilometru mistrovství světa. Ladies and gentlemen, you present your best brothers in category K1 men for 1000 meters. Medaile nejlepším finalistům bude předávat generální sekretář Mezinárodní kanoistické federace. Medals will be handed over by the secretary general of the ICF, Mr. Simon Tusen. V doprovodu s tým lídrem Německa. Accompanied by Jens Kahl, team leader of Team of Germany. Bronzovou medaili na letošním mistrovství světa vybojoval The bronze medalist is Josef Dostal Czech The silver medalist is Fernando Pimenta, Portugal! The gold medalist and the world champion of the category K1 man in the tear in the race 4000 meters is Tom Liebscher, Germany!
Dámy a pánové, vyslechněme společně hymnu Německa. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Germany. Ty na baru si s ním jsi šla? No, tak si <laughs>
presented over by the ICF Board of Directors member John McKenzie. Doprovodu s prezidentem Maďarské federace. Accompanied by Mr. Gabo Smith, president of Hungarian Canoe Federation. Bronzovou medaili vybojovali. The bronze medalists are Justina Iskrička, Paula Pašek, Poland. The silver medalist of Tabea Meder, Melanie Kebhold, Germany! Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Hungary.
Dámy a pánové, je totiž připraveno vyhlášení nejlepších závodníků finále kategorie K2 muži 1000 metrů. Velice se to vedně v kategorie K2 muži Medals will be handed over by Mr. Jose Perurena Lopez, the president of the ICF and IOC member. A také lídr týmu Srbska. Accompanied by Bora Sibinkic, team leader of the team of Serbia. Bronzovou medaili mistrovství světa kategorie K2 muži 1000 metrů získávají The bronze medalist of Jakub Spicar, Daniel Havel, Čerk. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Serbia. 